some of the key information we need to obtain from folds is the orientation of their hinge lines and to get an idea of how tight they are. In other words, a measurement of their interlimb angle. And we're going to do that using the orientations of their limbs and plot them on stereonets. So let's get a visualization first of all. So here we've got a fold, it's a bit of kitchen sponge, and let's look at its structure. It has two limbs, one on each side, and the intersection between those limbs is the hinge. And the hinge is a line, it's a line of intersection between the two planes of the limbs, one plane each. And the hinge line has a plunge and a plunge direction. And we can try and obtain the orientation of the hinge line, this line of intersection between the two limbs, by potting the orientation of the limbs. So the other feature we want to look at is the profile plane. Now the profile plane, as we'll see in a second, is the orientation we use to get a true measure of the fold tightness, in other words the interlimb angle. So what is the profile plane? It's this feature here, which is a cut across the fold structure in the orientation shown by that piece of card. And the key point about the profile plane is that the hinge line is its pole. So that's a relationship that we can use on a stereo net. Let's think about the profile plane. So here we are looking onto the profile plane and I've just traced off what the fold looks like on it. So that is the true shape of the fold on the profile plane and that's what it looks like. We have the limbs here and the angle between these limbs is the interlimb angle. So we measure that angle on the profile plane. We're gonna do this here by using two planes which are the limbs we're going to use the intersection of these two planes to find the hinge line. We then construct a profile plane, and then upon that profile plane, we will measure the fold interlimb angle. So let's go to a stereo net and deal with an example. And we'll have a bed from each limb. These orientations are shown there on the top right hand side. We've got two beds. We'll plot these in turns. Let's start with the top one. We'll mark a north arrow. Find the bearing of the strike, which is 010, spin that orientation around so it lines up with the tracing circles, and sketch out the one that represents a dip of 60 degrees towards the east, which is what you can see there. So we've measured in 60 degrees from the east side from north to find that particular great circle. Right, let's get back to north and put on the second bed reading. And this has a strike of 222. This time, its dip is from the west. So we swing the stereo net around so that we can find 222, lines up with the great circles, and trace off the one that represents 50 degrees, measured in from the western side here. So now we've got our two bedding planes, one from each limb, which are arcing across the stereo net. And the intersection is going to be the hinge line. It's that circle up there before we deal with that, let's just check that our plotting is correct. So we can see that the black line there, which represents our first bedding plane, does indeed arch round to the eastern side. Our green line on there, which represents the bed 22250, does indeed arch round to the western side of the stereo net. So what are the hinge line? Well, it's a line, so we'll report it as a plunge and a plunge direction. So that red circle where the two great circles of bedding cross each other is the hinge line. So now let's find its plunge and plunge direction. So we just line this up now here so that the hinge line lines up with a vertical great circle. It's the line that goes straight through the pin in the middle of the uh, stereo net and read off the bearing that that has, which is a bearing around of 022 from north. And we can measure in from that edge of the stereo net to the point of the hinge line and read off its amount of plunge, which is, you can see there, about 22 degrees. So as it happens, this hinge line has a plunge of 22 towards a bearing of 022. There we go. So that's the hinge line. Now, 
let's find the profile plane so that we can find the interlim angle. So remember that the profile plane has as its pole the hinge line. So let's set this up so that the hinge line can behave like a pole. So here it is opposite a set of tracing circles. We've rotated the hinge line so it's opposite those great circles. We measure across 90 degrees from the hinge line and that great circle picked out by the blue line has as its pole the hinge line. That blue line is now the profile plane. And we can report that because it's a plane with a strike and a dip. So the profile plane has a strike of 112, has a dip of 78 degrees towards the south. So what's the interlim angle? Well, it's the angle between the two beds, which represent the limbs. But let's deal with something first. And this is an ambiguity that arises because on a stereographic projection, we lose the idea of place. Let's illustrate that. We're only having orientations. Let's take one of these beds. Let's say that's the 010 uh, striking bed dipping towards the east. So you might think that the fold structure looks like this with an easterly dipping bed and a westerly dipping bed in here. So the structure is upright. But because we don't know the relative positions of these two limbs, this solution is equally possible. So here we have still have got two layers or a layer dipping one to one side of it towards the east, one side to the west, but we've got two ways of solving the problem. So we need to have some idea of the attitude of the um, axial surface in here. Is it an upright fold or a recumbent fold? Well, for example, if we have a proxy for what the orientation of the axial surface is, for example, cleavage, um, we could use that information, or we may just have an understanding that the fold structure is upright anyway. But we need to have something that removes this ambiguity, otherwise we have two possible solutions on the stereo net. Right, so let's go back to our data that we've been plotting and ask the question, what's the interlim angle? If the fold is upright, the axial surface will go through the pin in the stereo net, by definition, the axial surface will be vertical, so it'll go through the pin, so therefore, and it has to have the hinge on it, so therefore the um, trace of the fold would come through something like that and therefore the interlim angle would be the one that contains the axial surface. So if we spin this back around so we have the uh, profile plane lined up with tracing circles we measure this angle in here and it's 74 degrees and that is the interlim angle for an upright fold with those two limb orientations. So there we go that's how this thing plots up. So that's a quick illustration of how the measurements of one limb and another limb, so we have two plane orientations from either side of the fold, bedding planes if you will, their line of intersection is the hinge line of the fold, which we report with a plunge and a plunge direction. We can find the fold profile plane because the hinge line is the pole to that plane. And then if we know the attitude of the fold, we can then calculate the interlim angle. It's a very simple method for establishing the geometry of folds.